Hello, it's Roisin Curie here. You're very welcome to my channel. I'm here with you today for another little tutorial on sketching on location in ink and watercolour. I hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, how are you today? So I went to um, Mulrug a couple of days ago, which is a seashore quite close to where I live. And why did I go? Oh yeah, because I was having a really bad day and nothing in particular happened, nothing at all really. But it was just one of those unproductive days and in my experience, you can't do worse. No, you can't do worse. Yeah, that's right, in my experience, no, you can't do better, sorry. You can't do better than get on your bicycle or get the runners on and go out for a walk and just do a bit of exercise to clear your air, to clear, clear your head. This isn't going very well so far. Now, um, I would have gone for a walk except I was getting blisters from going back to walking after such a very long time being lazy. So instead I hopped on my bicycle and I put dear little Reuben in the front basket because he loves going in the basket, don't you Reuben? Um, I'll, I'll definitely have Reuben in the, in, in the video before I get to the end. So even though, he, if truth be told, he phoned it in the last day, he was like, just like, did not want to be there. He did not want to turn up. So uh, today I'm hoping for a little bit better performance from him. So anyway, I went down and it was really, really windy and it was fabulous down at the shore. And I was only in the shorts and a kind of a fleece and a pair of runners and I wasn't even cold and I'm always cold. So um, I had a really nice time and this is the sketch that I came up with, which I'm going to tell you all about because I filmed it when I was down at the shore. And then I realized when I got home that I could have done with a bit more background shots. So I went back down there with Paddy, my son yesterday, and, um, and we, we took some background shots and I, I, I'll show you, um, I'll show you what, I, what we came up with. And it was even, more glorious than the day before because the wind had dropped completely and there wasn't a breath. So I did another quick sketch which isn't as fascinating and exciting as the first because I haven't finished it. That's just the way it is. So um, anyway, I hope you enjoy this little video all about Mulrug and I don't know, the background shots. And I'm gonna show you how to do fluffy white clouds on a lovely sunny evening. They're very specific to, sun, to sunshine and evening because what you get is like um, really, okay, you've got the fluffy white bits at the top and then you've got the kind of the slightly gray bits at the bottom of each of the clouds and that doesn't really change if there's clouds, whatever time of day it is. But when it's late afternoon on a really sunny day, you get like extra dark bits of gray just before the white fluffy bits at the top which is a function of the sky and the sun being so bright shining onto the clouds making them white and fluffy whiter and fluffier not fluffier making them whiter and, and more glowy but by contrast the dark rainy filled bits are that bit darker it's just to do with values again so even up there in the sky uh, you'll get your values. And by the way, it's a stunning morning here in Galway. So I'm going to try and uh, get as many videos in the good weather as I possibly can before we say goodbye to this fabulous uh, season for another little while. As usual, the only thing I've brought with me in terms of art supplies is my sketch pocket. Let's see what I have available to sketch today. Okay, I have my sketchbook. I have my foodie pens with all different color lids that I've put on just so I know the different colors. So today I'm going to use the uh, Roar and Klingner uh, Sketch Ink in Frida, which is a lovely sort of a Payne's gray color. And then I have my clips for holding down the pages. Sometimes you get this little divider getting trapped. So it's quite handy to be able to trap it in another page. And then you can pop on your paint box and I'm all set, I'm all set to go. And then when the time comes to paint, I'll be able to use my water brushes. Get the whole thing done all in one. And then if I run out of ink, which I usually do, I'll have my little spare vial of ink there and I always bring 
a spare vial of water as well because you don't need much for your for your water brushes okay so time to get comfy and i'll get going now it's very very windy today but i just thought i'd share with you a new cloud technique that has been on the back of my mind for a very long time let me just show you before i put the blue on okay right i've used don't mind that little wet line up there so i've used a very thin line make sure it's flowing well or it'll put you off and i've drawn the outline of the cloud as best i could and then i drew little ink lines oh it's gone all blurry hold on a second okay wait now okay see those little thin lines inside the clouds they represent the parts that are going to have a dark line next to them so there's a good example of one and then as you march upwards you can get a little bit darker and it's not that the clouds get darker up there it's more that the clouds are more brightly lit up by the sun and therefore they look whiter and then by contrast the dark bits look darker so again it's all about the values and I wanted to show you before I put the blue on I can't remember why but there was a reason let's have another look at that obviously they're changing a lot as I go but let's put the blue on now and I'm going to put the blue on by putting a clear uh, film of water on the bit where the blue is and then I'm going to mix up a blue wash probably fellow blue because that's what I have I'm going to pop, pop it on and hopefully it'll land nice and smoothly and then I'm going to try and capture these sparkles and all the rest of it so I better get on with it before it starts lashing I know it doesn't look like it's going to start lashing but you just never know on days like this Okay, I've put my blue on and I mixed Ultramarine Intense with Phthalo Blue. And I made a little clear water film before I put any blue on. And that meant that as it dried, it didn't, it didn't leave bands. We don't want bands. Now, it was perfectly smooth on the left and less so on the right. But then I took a chance, which I don't think has paid off. I wanted to make it extra blue right next to the frilly bits of the clouds. So I added a tiny bit and that is risky. So it'll only, I'll only know for sure once it's bone dry and we're nearly there. But really as a golden rule, you mustn't touch paint that is in the middle of drying with fresh paint or with water to try and smooth it out. So it does require not just a deft hand, but it requires confidence to get a nice smooth sky. And it also requires ability to predict the future and what the paint is going to do as it dries. And you have to be a meteorologist as well, because you have to predict what the wind is going to do to your paint. So I would say that only practice will get you there. So get out and paint some clouds. Okay, so much for the clouds. Now I'm going to get on to the rest of it. So the next step is to get the main rocks in while the tide is where I want it. So the tide is going out, so I have to be really quick. But you see the way those rocks right next to the water are extremely black. Well, that's because of values again. It's because they've been hit by sunlight and as a result, they look extremely black. Obviously, they're no different from any of the other rocks and they in turn will look pale once the tide goes out and they dry off. So they're wet and they're glistening and you can represent that with your dark blue ink with all these little unpainted areas at the top. So let's see how I get on with a bit of paint. Okay, I've put on the sea. Uh, it doesn't look very sparkly yet, but I'm hoping that the fact that I've used some very dark blues on the right means that the white gel pen I'm going to add is going to really stand out. So that's the plan there. Um, we've got a lot more rocks to do, so I better get on with it because the tide, is, they are a changing. Right, well, beautiful though the day has been so far. Well, since I've been out here this afternoon anyway. I nearly, I nearly was drowned on the way from the house to my studio this morning. But never mind that. So I've been here for a good while and I'm starting to get a little bit cold. It's just as well because I'm nearly done. Now, 
Normally I don't bother going into such detail with the pebbles in the foreground, but I thought I'd give it a try this time. Now, all you have to do is do loads and loads and loads and loads of curves, clipping the bottom of each curve with the next curve underneath it. And then you just put in a little pop of darker bluey color for the shadow at the bottom, at the intersection, whoops, losing focus there, of each of the curves. I don't know, I'm not explaining it very well, but it's, it's actually quite easy. And if you think it's tedious, well, I was laughing to myself because I, I was thinking I'm gonna to say to you, well, you need to cop yourself on because you're in an absolutely beautiful place. Well, I am anyway. And I hope you are too, if you choose to sit by the shore and sketch and uh, just get on with it. And don't worry about it being tedious. Where else nicer could you be? Now, as you can see, my green paint ran there and that's annoying me intensely. Uh, I'm not sure if I can fix it. So I've added a bit of white gel pen for the little bits of waves and a few little splashes. And on the whole, I'm quite pleased. Uh, all I have to do now is put a little bit of black ink on the bottom of those rocks to really beef up the values. And then I'm going to get on my bicycle do, 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 and put my dog do, do, do. Rubes, you good boy. Put my dog into the basket on the front and I shall cycle home. And then I will be happy with the lovely day that I've had. Well, I'm pretty much finished. I don't know if you can tell, oh, hang on, I'm getting the light, the right, light right. I've added a little bit of black at the base of some of the really dark rocks, you know? Hang on, let me get that over there. Anyway, so there you go. I've had a fabulous hour or so, and uh, Ruben's been very, very patient. Aren't you, Rubes? So, um, but I think he's getting a bit cold, or maybe he's not, I don't know. He's got a lovely fur coat. Anyway, that's me done. So onto my bike and off I pedal home. See you later. Ruben, will we go home? We'll be we hop on the bike and go home. Well, here I am back at Mulrug. A day very like yesterday's beautiful afternoon. I'm here with Reuben. Mulrug is the name of the beach quite close to my home. And it's rather less windy today than it was yesterday. And there's no cars around and I haven't brought my swimsuit, but I tell you what, I'd be sorely tempted to pop in for a dip because it's the tide is quite high. Let's get a little closer. Well, it looks kind of seaweedy over there, but it's actually really, really clear just next to the end of the pier. I've swum there so many times with my family. It reminds me of the time that Paddy went in for a dip and he told us afterwards that he saw a mouse swimming past him. We figured it probably wasn't a mouse because it was very high tide and the uh, <clears throat> mice had nowhere to go but I guess into the water until the tide dipped low enough for them to get back onto the pier. Didn't put us off though. Now it's a lot calmer than it was here yesterday and the sun is not shimmering on the sea like it was but the good thing is the sea is so calm. The bad thing is I left my swimsuit back at the house. So I'm out of luck there because it would have been nice to go for a swim. Then again, if I had my togs with me, I probably would have chickened out as I usually do. It's good to be here though. Well, as I said at the beginning, I did start a second sketch while I was down in the shore there yesterday with Paddy. Now, I thought it would be a good idea to show you all the clouds again because I'd missed a bit at the beginning. This is the sketch when I sort of decided I wouldn't go any further. But I have a better idea. Rather than trying to squeeze as much as possible into a short YouTube video because you don't really want to have them longer than about 25 minutes, half an hour, I have decided to restart my teaching program that I was doing up until May of 24. So my new sketch club opens up 
early in September. So rather than try and fit everything into um, 25 minutes, my classes will be 90 minutes long and they'll always be live. So it'll be a bit of fun, a bit of crack and they'll always be recorded. So if you can't get to a live for any reason, you'll be able to access them at your leisure. So if you'd like to know more, if it sounds like something that you might be interested in, contact me at sketchwithroisin at gmail.com. They're going to take place on Mondays. So the time zone will probably suit you from my experience but get in touch anyway and I'll send you all the details. Well I hope you've enjoyed that video and I hope it's helped you get a little bit more fluent with your cloud sketching. Um, what can I say except there's only one thing for it you have to go out and practice. So um, Reuben is looking extra fluffy at the moment doesn't he look like a sea otter I think a bit. Reuben turn around a little bit show the fluff Rubes this way there you go now the ribbon is a bit fluffier but actually I'm thinking of giving him a haircut today so perhaps this was a good day for his uh for his filming episode all right thanks for watching and I will see you next time